Tonight, we're taking a trip to Hartford, Wisconsin to explore a heartbreaking case of betrayal, obsession, and a life cut tragically short. This is the story of Jesse Blodgett. Jesse was a bright, talented 19-year-old with a passion for acting, singing, and playing music. On July 14th, 2013, she gave the performance of a lifetime as the lead in a local production of Fiddler on the Roof. The audience adored her, but little did they know this would be Jessie's final bow. Three days before Jessie's big show, another young woman named Melissa Etzler was walking her dog in a nearby park when she was attacked by a knife-wielding creep in plaid shorts. Melissa fought back like a warrior princess, grabbing the blade with her bare hands until she could yank it away from her attacker. The audacity of this guy. Thankfully, Melissa had the presence of mind to get a good look at him and his vehicle before he sped off. She gave the cops a spot-on description. White male, sandy blonde hair, pale skin, 18, 20 years old, 6, 2, 210 pounds, driving an older model dark blue Dodge Caravan. But what did this have to do with Jesse? Well, buckle up, because this ride is about to take a twisted turn. The morning after Jesse's triumphant performance, her mam Joyce peeked in to check on her. Jesse was fast asleep, exhausted from her big night. So Joyce headed off to work while Jesse's dad, Buck, had already left for the day. But when Joyce came home for lunch a few hours later, Joyce enters Jesse's room and screams in horror. She walked into every parent's worst nightmare. Her little girl was dead. Police lights flash as cops and EMTs rush around the crime scene. The horrific truth came out. Jesse had been tied up, brutally raped, and strangled to death, likely by someone who knew the family's routines and that they often left their doors unlocked. But who would do this? And why sweet Jesse? story will be featured on GMA in the morning. 12 News' Christina Palladino is live in Hartford tonight. And Christina, police gave an update on the investigation, but it's providing little comfort. Yeah, the latest from the Hartford Police Department here tonight is an email that we got on our phones earlier today. They had no updates on the investigation, but they did want to stress the community there is no threat here in the Hartford area. Now, I spoke with several of Jesse Blodgett's friends tonight. They tell me she had no enemies. She and definitely they are... made whoever she was talking to feel like they were the only person in the room. Jacqueline was so, one of Jesse's yeah, best friends growing up together in Hartford. In fact, Jesse's parents asked her to paint this portrait of Jesse for her funeral. Jacqueline tells me she stayed up all night to do it. I wanted to paint her. I've always wanted to paint her, so it was, uh, it was definitely a work of love. Jacqueline and her friends say learning of Jesse's murder was shocking. The 19 year old was found dead in her bed by her mother more than a week ago with strangulation marks to her neck. She had come home from a cast party for the local production of Fiddler on the Roof hours before. Police have only said they're in the process of an active investigation and that the public is not in danger. Jeremy Enter Dan Bartelt, Jesse's 20 year old best buddy and former flame. These two theater geeks had been thick as thieves since high school. Dan was even front and center at Jesse's memorial, comforting her devastated parents. So imagine everyone's shock when Dan's dad's Blue Dodge Caravan was identified as the vehicle used in Melissa's attack. When the cops called Dan to sort out this mess, he was literally in the middle of grieving with Jesse's family. Talk about awkward timing. But Danny boy wasn't sweating it. He waltzed into the police station, thinking he could charm his way out of this predicament like a regular Leonardo DiCaprio. Too bad the cops weren't buying his act, especially when they noticed his fresh cuts and scratches. Dan claimed it was just a little kitchen mishap. Just a boring accident while cooking officers. No biggie. Except his own dad had already told police Dan was unemployed. Whoopsie! Caught in a lie right out the gate. But here's where things get really juicy. When asked about Jesse's murder, Dan casually mentioned she'd been raped. The problem? The cops hadn't released that detail to the public yet. Nice try, Pinocchio. That little slip of the tongue was all the detectives needed to start connecting the dots. And boy, oh boy, did Danny have some dark secrets lurking on his computer. 
snuff films, violent porn, serial killer obsessions, you name it, this guy was Googling it. But one video stood out from the rest. It showed a crime chillingly similar to what happened to poor Jesse, right down to the creep washing the body and tucking her in bed post-mortem. Coincidence? I think not. From there, the evidence piled up faster than the body count in a Tarantino flick. Same type of rope used on Jesse found in Dan's garage? Check. Bloody cleaning wipes and a BDSM ball gag dumped in the park trash? Check and check. Oh, and let's not forget the most damning proof of all. Dan's DNA all over Jesse's crime scene, on the ligatures, and inside the rape kit. Told you this was going to be a doozy, didn't I? So much for the choir boy routine. Danny's web of lies unraveled quicker than a cheap sweater in a room full of kittens. The murder charge against a young man from Hubertus is rippling through his family and friends. Violence, something they say was so out of character for 19-year-old Daniel Bartel. He stands accused of killing 19-year-old Jesse Blodgett last month in her Hartford home. 12 News reporter Nick Bohr is investigating this case and learned that Bartelt had a big secret he was keeping for months. The image of Daniel Bartelt, accused murderer, simply doesn't compute for those who knew him. He was a good guy. He was always joking around. He was a, he was a nice guy, so I was pretty surprised. Did Dylan you ever see him have a temper or any violence? Or? No, not really. I mean, he was, he was always really in a good mood when I was around him. He was always joking around. I mean, if there was any, like, violence, it was just messing around. Yeah. You know, so this is... Couldn't even see his coming, really. According We've to the learned. criminal complaint, Bartell told police and his family that he worked here at Roller Systems in Houstonsburg. But when we came here to find out what kind of an employee he was, they told us he's never worked here. When Hartford police told Bartell's parents that he'd never been going to work at all, his dad told them that apparently lies have been very easy for Dan lately. So unlike Dan that his attorney questions Bartell's mental competency. Though he's not representing Bartelt, criminal defense attorney Jonathan Smith says it's rare that a client can't understand the process. Competency means that they uh, lack the mental capacity to either understand the proceedings or to assist in their own defense. A mental health exam will take place over the next month while Bartelt remains jailed. Now, if he's found not competent to stand trial, he would likely receive inpatient mental treatment until he could stand trial, Craig. But that doctor's report is due back next month for a hearing. A jury wasted no time finding him guilty of first degree intentional homicide, earning him a deluxe lifetime stay at the Crowbar Hotel. And how did Dan react to the verdict? By turning to Jesse's shattered parents and saying, I kid you not, these chains don't make me guilty. The stones on this fella. No remorse, no apology, just the gall to plead innocence till the bitter end. If mental gymnastics were an Olympic sport, this guy would be taking home the gold. A developing story now. It's life in prison with no parole for the Richfield man convicted of killing a former classmate. A judge sentenced Daniel Barlett. Bar Held late this afternoon for the murder of 19-year-old Jesse Blodgett. Blodgett was discovered strangled in her bedroom in Hartford. WISN. 15 months after he was first hauled into court here, in a heart-wrenching sentencing today, Daniel Bartelt learned he'll be spending the rest of his life in prison. Daniel Bartelt was the reason everyone was here in court, but the young woman he killed, 19-year-old Jesse Blodgett of Hartford, was the person on everyone's mind. You charmed us, you challenged us, you dazzled us and inspired us. So confident and free to be yourself. So encouraging of others to do the same. Oh, even as long he's innocent, Blodgett's family said bluntly they don't believe him. I have a disgustingly innate ability to lie to myself that I have exercised far too many times in my life. But I refuse to hurt someone other than myself by doing that. When Dan murdered Jesse, he killed not just who she was, but who she would become. She will never have the chance to be that woman. And I will never have the chance to know and love and admire and take pride in that woman. Bartelt still faces three other charges accused of attacking a woman in a park a few days before killing Blodgett. In Washington County, Nick Ford, WISN 12 News.
The Washington County District Attorney called Bartelt the most dangerous person he's ever come across and successfully arguing that Bartelt will be sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. His last hope for freedom was an appeal in 2017, crying foul over the police tactics that got him to spill his guts. Nice try, boyo, but the verdict stands. So, say goodbye to Danny as he takes his final bow, exiting stage left to the Walpun Correctional Facility for a permanent engagement. But this story isn't about the monster who snuffed out a bright light. It's about the incredible young woman who made the world a better place in her tragically short 19 years. Jessie Blodgett was a force of nature, a gifted performer, a devoted daughter, a loyal friend. She had so much love to give and so much life left to live. Though her story ended in tragedy, Jessie's legacy endures through her father's love-hate project, dedicated to ending male-on-female violence and inspiring love over hate. The world may never fully understand what drove her killer to commit such unspeakable evil or the terror Jessie surely felt in her final moments, but we can honor her memory by choosing compassion over cruelty, creation over destruction, and hope over fear. Jesse, you were a shooting star, a supernova in human form. Your light will never be forgotten. And to her family, should you ever see this, I am deeply sorry for your loss. Thank you for fighting to create a better world in your daughter's name. Jesse would be so very proud.